everyone, and welcome to VM Blog's coverage ahead of the upcoming iGel Disrupt 2024 event taking place next month in Miami. And today we're joined by our friend, Carl Gersh, the Vice President of Global Marketing at iGel. Carl, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Good to see you, David. Good to see you, Brian. It's always a pleasure when we get a chance to get the opportunity to talk. So let's start it off. Brian and I, we both wanted to say, you know, thank you. Uh, and today we're here to talk about the upcoming Disrupt event. And uh, maybe if you wouldn't mind, just kick things off. Just give us a quick overview on what the event is all about. Yeah, yeah, you bet. You bet. So look, Disrupt has always been renowned for bringing together thought leaders, industry pioneers, and you know, just overall technology enthusiasts, right? Experts in the field of end user computing and endpoint security um, to talk about what's going on, what's the latest, to hear from the sponsors, the folks that are creating the technology, to share ideas and to have a little bit of fun. Um, so this year, we are super honored to announce that we do have a great lineup of sponsors, including Microsoft, Citrix, and Broadcom EUC Group, um, which is the artist formerly known as VMware Horizon. Um, they'll be joining our uh, hardware partners, HP, Lenovo, and LG, and about 20 other sponsors, really making it one of the biggest events focused on end user computing, digital workspaces, cybersecurity, and cloud computing. So Disrupt is a three-day event. Uh, we, as you mentioned, we're hosting it down in Miami, Florida at the beautiful Diplomat Resort. It's a beachfront uh, resort and conference center. Um, we've really uh, spared no expense as it relates to putting together what I think is going to be the best disrupt we've ever had. Now, we always look forward to uh, IGEL Disrupt every year. It's one of the our favorite uh, shows to go to. Um, what are some of the differences from this year compared to last year, and what can attendees look forward to in this event? So for Disrupt 2024, we did we, we took a step back. As if you've been following Agile, you're familiar with Agile, you know there's been a few changes, including the brand new logo, which you see illuminated right behind me. Um, we have a new executive leader, Klaus Osterman, who I had the pleasure of working with over at Citrix while I was at Citrix. And um, we really sit down and we said to ourselves, what is it that makes Disrupt great? And what are things we could do to improve the overall Disrupt experience? So all the things that people like about Disrupt, right? The fact that it is a show focused on all things that you see that we bring together a lot of disparate vendors into one location. And arguably, I would say we are the ultimate event for end user computing and endpoint security. Um, and then, so, you know, what are things that people have asked for in the past? So we're going to have more breakout sessions than ever before. We're looking at over 40 different breakout sessions from our sponsors, from guest speakers, from other um, customers, as well as a whole host of breakouts from iGel. We're going to put those breakouts into tracks. So if you're in healthcare IT, you'll be able to sort and select breakouts specific to healthcare IT. And we're asking our presenters to curate that content so that it's most appropriate for that audience. So the four content tracks we're looking at for Disrupt 2024 are, as I mentioned already, healthcare IT, cybersecurity, EUC transformation. I think we're going to talk about that a little bit in this uh, in this interview. Um, you know, as well as a CXO track, something for the executives, some people in in strategic IT. Um, and then just an overall, there'll be a general general purpose track as well. We're going to have tracks that are going to be super technical. We're going to have some tracks and some sessions, again, that are more strategic and management oriented. So that was one of the, the, the some of the, the key changes. We've also rethought how do we deliver our keynotes? What do we want to present in the keynotes? You're going to hear a lot of new messaging, new information from iGel. We have repositioned, and I think in a way that makes us stronger than ever before, more relevant than ever before as we go into 2024 under Klaus's direction. So it's not it's not the same disrupt that we've had in the past. Although, like I said, having been with iGel since twenty twenty since twenty twenty, um, we we're certainly looking at you know that sense of community things that we do that people like about disrupt is still going to be there. But we're bringing a whole lot more in terms of you know the quality of the content, um, how we're organizing it, you know, and and the level of the speakers and the presentations we're delivering. Now, I'm definitely looking forward to the event. I, like Brian said, we look forward to it every year. We've been to every disrupt event here in the U.S. Uh, and, and it really has, over the years, grown, and it's become the ultimate end-user computing event that's that's out there in the industry. So, you know, previously, you guys have done uh, two or more Disrupt-branded events over the course of the year. I know you've done one in North America, one in Europe, and then one of the uh, one year prior, you guys did uh, multi-city uh, tours. What's happening this year? 
and and obviously we talked about it at the beginning, but you're moving the show. The last couple of years, it's been in Nashville, and this year it's going to uh, Miami, b- both fantastic cities in their own right. Uh, but also curious why the change in venue to Miami. No, that's great. And actually, you touched on something I probably should have mentioned earlier as well. So Disrupt this year, the Miami event is a global event. So one of the things we looked at was in years past, as you've mentioned, with the exception of the one year we did the road show, typically we did Disrupt as two sister shows. They were the, pretty much the same content, just on different continents. This year, when we talked, sat down and looked at it, we said, what if we, you know, what if we did one big show where we could focus all of our effort, our investment, our time, do that in Q1, Q2 at time frame, and then do a follow-up show in EMEA in Q3, Q4. And that's what we're doing. So Disrupt Miami is a global disrupt. Um, all of our sponsors sponsor both, but by spacing the shows out, it does allow us to change the focus a little bit, again, to make Disrupt this Disrupt in Miami the biggest, best Disrupt ever. Um, and then when we follow up in the fall, right in September, just before Oktoberfest in Munich, we can do updates on content that's presented, but it's going to be a, a, a different a different set of content that we'll deliver there um, overall, and it gives people you know that that opportunity. So bigger investment in Miami, big global disrupt. Um, it, timing couldn't be better for us, honestly, in terms of you know the all the things that are going on, all the things that people want to talk about. Um, now, why Miami? Well, we did we did Nashville for a few years. I like Nashville very much, but we thought if we're going to do a global event, um, you know that we want to attract people. You know, in in as we're exiting winter, you know, what better place than than right here in in South Florida, right? It's beautiful weather. Again, the Diplomat Resort is a four star, you know, really high level resort. We have three major airports within easy driving distance. We have Fort Lauderdale International Airport. It's about fifteen minutes away. Miami is about twenty miles, so it's about you know thirty five to forty minutes depending on traffic. Then we even have West Palm, so it's very easy for people to to attend the event if they're coming from Europe, if they're coming from anywhere in the U.S. and North America. Uh, you know, overall. And again, we went through, you know, when you design a show like this, an event like this, you tour different, you know, different venues, you look at different locations. Um, you know, the West Coast, we thought would be challenging for folks coming from EMEA. Um, you know, really Miami kind of emerged, you know, as as the leader. And I'll say this, people may not realize it, but Miami is, you know, really flourishing as a tech hub on the East Coast. So, you know, I live here, maybe I'm a little biased, admittedly, but, you know, Citrix has always been here. They've had their headquarters right here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But, you know, overall, we're seeing is that Miami, according to Forbes, Miami is outranking Austin and New York in terms of, of technology, um, in terms of tech hubs, right? So the number of businesses and entrepreneurs that are here, um, the number of technology employed individuals, um, you know, uh, that are here, you know, Miami is really kind of emerging as as on the East Coast and throughout the U.S. actually, I should say, um, as, as a top tech hub. So that was definitely, definitely part of it. And listen, if you're an old time fan of of Citrix, you will know that Citrix was, uh, they had one of the, I think it was iForum back in 2002, right when the Diplomat opened. So it did feel a little bit like, uh, you know, coming back and, uh, you know, bringing some things full circle. Now, every year you guys have kind of a theme. Uh, you know, this year, it looks like you're kind of going with the Miami Vice type of theme. Um, obviously, you know, we're going to hear things like <clears throat> about EUC and DEX and the like, but what are some of the topics or discussions that you expect to be taking place during the event? Sure. And it's interesting. So we do have a theme for this year as well. Last year was say yes. This year, our theme is now and next. Right. And it ties into Agile's new positioning as the secure endpoint operating system for now and next. But we take the idea of what now and next is all about. Right. We we sort of we talked about with the theme. Now and next is about how do we solve the problems that face us today? Right. And we and in in end user computing, you know, it's I'll make a, a statement that is a gross um generalization and, and probably a little bit of an understatement, a gross understatement, that there's been a lot of change that has happened in the last, you know, two years within EUC. And organizations and and IT leadership and management of those organizations are being tasked with figuring out, hey, how do we solve these problems now? Right. We're coming out of a we're coming out of a pandemic, right? There's a lot of analysts talking about things like, you know, um, uh, hybrid work, right? There's a lot of shit, new threats that are uh, arising around, you know, cyber cyber threats that are arising. So organizations are saying, hey, we got to figure out what to do now in a, in a time when there's a lot of turbulence. We also need to figure out what's the long term look like, right? I don't think I could do an interview where someone doesn't ask about AI, 
right? But AI is going to be pervasive. It's going to be, it's going to penetrate all areas of our lives in, in big and little ways, right? And certainly enterprise tech is going to have to, to, to take a look at AI, right? The evolving nature of how do we continue to secure our, you know, to provide cybersecurity. You know, it's amazing to me that, you know, we've been taught, we talk about it all the time, cybersecurity all the time, but, you know, I came home yesterday to a letter in the mail about another breach, you know, ransomware attack, you know, from some, I think, credit card they had years ago and closed. So, right, endpoint, the endpoints are a huge attack vector. How do we address that? What are we doing around endpoint security? So, so really, so what we've talked about when you come to the show is on day one, we're going to talk about now. Day two, we're going to look ahead. We're going to talk about next, right? We're going to talk about things like AI. We've asked our sponsors and our presenters to look a little bit in the future. Let us know what do they see coming, right? And it's really interesting we hear that, right? I mean, so certainly, you know, I'm on VM blog. You know, a lot of your 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 listeners, a lot of your your site visitors, certainly are engaged and are using technologies from Citrix and VMware, and they're go, both going to be there. And I think this might be. Be careful, I say this, you know, but I'll, I'll go out and say this might be one of the first really big public events where the the Broadcom EUC division is going to get to talk to people about what they've got going on, right? In the silence, a lot of people are saying, "Hey, you know, is it good? Is it bad? Is it whatever?" I'll tell you what I've heard. It sounds pretty exciting, and everyone's going to get a chance to hear that at Disrupt. So when we talk about the next, right? How do we chart the course? How do we be prepared for the next five years, right? We're going to do that kind of on day two. And there's going to be some like, you know, and it gives us some freedom to have some fun with that. So, um, so that's a little bit about the theme, a little bit about what we're doing with the uh, with the show, how we're trying to organize the, the, the content, you know, around that that theme. Yeah, it's a great theme. And you're right, there's there's a lot of change happening in the, uh, the world of EUC in the last, you know, even six months, uh, whether it's Citrix, uh, VMware or Microsoft, and you you even alluded to the fact that you know uh, iGel itself. You guys have have kind of changed, evolved. Maybe if you could talk a little bit about uh, you know the evolution of of iGel, um, some of the challenges that uh, people are facing that you guys are addressing head on, and how you're solving some of those challenges. You bet, you bet. So as I said, we we. When Klaus joined, you know, he asked some very, very difficult questions of the team, right? How are we positioned today? How do we envision ourselves being positioned in the future? How do we really articulate the true value of what iGel is delivering to our customers, right? And how do we sort of shake off those last vestiges of being considered a thin client company, which we are not. We're an operating system company. I'm very proud to be an operating system company. But, you know, in our marketing, we had made moves and we had started that evolution um, under previous leadership. But Klaus was ready. He, he kind of gave us that little... I'll say they'll kick in the pants and say, hey, guys, let's take it to the next level, right? Let's let's evolve this further. Let's make sure that everyone that looks at iGel knows this is not the same iGel that you may be familiar with from 20 years ago. And that started with the brand, right? So I don't think anyone looks at our logo now, looks at iGel Day. Other than, I mean, we kept the yellow. That's our color. But no one looks at iGel Day and thinks, oh, this is the same hedgehog thing client coming from before. But it, it's deeper than that, right? It wasn't just the surface. Let's put a coat of paint on it. It was let's really evaluate what iGel is all about and the value we bring. So the first thing we looked at was the markets that we serve, right? So first and foremost, sometimes when I talk to people that don't understand what we do, the first thing I tell them is to tell them we're an operating system company. And even the layperson understands an operating system, right? They have a device, they have a PC or a Mac device, they have an Android or iOS phone. So they understand what an operating system is. I then point out that we're a business only operating system. That is one of the distinctions I think that iGel holds, right? We are not trying to serve two masters. iGel is a business only operating system for endpoints. But beyond that, when we look at the the actual markets that, that benefit most from iGel, the ones that, that in which we are we are focused and going to continue to focus, there's really five key markets that we go after, right? So there's there's that we serve. There's there's healthcare, there's financial services, there's retail, there's manufacturing and pharma. We kind of lump those together, maybe they're two separate ones, right? You know, there's government, um, you know, and there's travel. It's actually six. So so we're we're looking at how do we continue to add value? How do we engage with those? those markets, how do we understand what we can do in terms of the evolution of our operating system? And the other thing is right there in our new tagline, we are the secure endpoint operating system for now and next, right? There is no more secure OS out there than iGel, period, full stop. Um, but it, it, again, those, those are nice words. So we said to ourselves, but, how, like, but let's think about how iGel provides security, right? And we're going to hear a lot more about this to disrupt, so I don't want to do a disservice, but I'll, I'll put this in out there, right? iGel is 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 the purveyor at the forefront of of this concept of a preventative security model. And and preventative security seems as if you think about IT and you think cybersecurity, there's a lot of time, money, and effort put into you know this kind of 
cycle of, you know, detect, remediate, right? We'll let you, you know, you know, you hear this from other vendors. Well, as soon as you get breached, we're going to help you. We're going to let you know you got breached. We're going to help you fix it, right? But I just saying, hey, there may be, maybe there's a different way to look at this, right? Maybe we want to look at is how do we, what can we do to decrease the percentage chance that you get breached, right? And and our preventive security model, which start which of which ROS is kind of the core, really is is key to that, right? We can also get big shifts. You know, you're going to hear a lot about zero trust at Disrupt and how Agile plays into zero trust and our partners playing into zero trust. Zero trust is going to be one of those core concepts as we move forward, regardless if we're hybrid, not hybrid. Somehow we do a giant return to office, which I doubt, um, right? The, 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 the things that we've learned in the organizations that are putting out zero trust are going to be at the forefront. And we're going to see more and more organizations adopt those, those types of stances, right? And Agile is going to be there with that as well, you know? So again, we're going to have sessions on the preventive security model. It is, it is not, again, it is not a marketing concept. It is, it is something that came from our product group. You know, it came from actually Klaus himself, who is a very, very technical CEO. Um, and I think it's really exciting. Something that really differentiates IGEL, you know, from a lot, from all the other OS organizations out there. But also just in general, it, it's, we use the word disrupt, it's a different way of thinking about security. So cybersecurity is going to be big. We're going to talk about, um, you know, obviously EUC, uh, you know, endpoint management uh, and the like. But, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's going to be a packed Three days for sure. Now you've kind of talked about, you know, you've got a great lineup of sponsors again this year and speakers. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what we can expect, uh, who's going to be uh, presenting on the main stage during the keynotes for your, um, out of your sponsors and speakers. Sure, you bet. And there's a few things I'm going to, I'm going to leave a few things out as, as, as surprises, which you guys can, can announce later on. But let me say this, it, we are bringing executives from all of our top sponsors, you know, in on the main stage. And we are, again, we are working very closely with them on the content they present. We want to make sure that again, that people that attend, it's not, it's not a bunch, it's not commercials. They're going to hear a story. They're going to hear a vision, you know, about how these organizations can, you know, work with IGEL and can deliver value. So we're going to have top executives from Citrix, top executives from Broadcom EUC division. Um, I don't know if I'll, I, obviously when, with the acquisition by KKR, is complete. We'll see a new brand there. I'm not sure if it'll be time to disrupt. Fingers crossed it might. Um, we'll hear from obviously folks from, from Microsoft. It'll be some of the speakers you've seen in the past. It'll be folks like Scott Manchester, people like Terry Vaughn, people like people like um, Calvin Shu. Um, we'll also have guest speakers from Lenovo. Um, and if I don't know if you saw the news, but Lenovo is a full um, OEM partner of Agile now. So they're shipping, you know, products, you know, with Agile S, you know, embedded right on there. Um, LG, which you can also do, um, not full OEM, but LG. Um, and then um, an HP as well. So an HP's got a lot of really, really cool content to deliver. I don't want to ruin the surprise, some of the surprises there, but we've been talking to them. They were one of the first sponsors who stepped up, you know, for Disrupt this year. They were really, really um, uh, excited to be on board. They're very enthusiastic uh, overall. In addition to that, we're going we're gonna to have customers come out, talk about their, their, their examples, their use cases, how they've deployed Agile, some best practices. Um, and we have a few guest speakers. So we have some analysts that we're going to be bringing out um, as well as we'll have a surprise guest speaker, um, you know, talking about, uh, you know, thinking about providing some strategic thinking about how organizations can adopt to change and really, again, navigate, you know, these turbulent times and come out ahead. So, again, it's going to be a big announcement. We haven't quite announced that speaker yet, um, but I'll say it's it's from an organization that has put out quite a few books on the topic of transformation. Um, I'm really excited about them participating in the show. And, again, you know, you guys, I'll let you know as soon as that gets announced so we can uh, we can post it right up on vmblog.com. Great. And Carl, I'm I'm expecting another fantastic of event this year. <clears throat> you can tell Brian and I are already uh excited by our backdrop. Uh so <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to the warm weather, right? I want to make one, sure and there's one big surprise uh, that uh -huh. I that we have announced, but this year at Disrupt, at the Disrupt Party, we have we will have performing for our audience the Grammy Award winning winning Gypsy Kings. Oh, wow. So so they're going to be coming out. We'll be at, we'll, where the party will be out, outdoors. It'll be an indoor outdoor thing um, right across from the diplomat overlooking the intercoastal waterway um, with the Gypsy Kings performing. Um, we're going to have a really, really great night. It's not all work and no play at Disrupt. So let me know how to have a good time. And uh, it was, you know, early on, we we're talking about who do we want to be the band? Who do we want to provide some of the entertainment? And uh, it was a recommendation actually from a customer said, what are the Gypsy Kings? And I thought, what better way? What what better, you know, that, that fusion of sound that they deliver? a better way for us to uh, 
be able to unwind after uh after a long day of learning than uh, have a few uh rum drinks and listen to uh, the Gypsy Kings, you know, under the stars. Yeah, perfect. You you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Uh, what uh I, before we let you go too, I want to make sure everyone who's watching this, we you know, Brian and I highly recommend this event. If you're in the EUC space, this is the event for the year to go to. How can uh, folks find out more about the event, and and more importantly, how can they get registered? You bet. So they can they can go if you go to igel.com, we have a banner right on our homepage that link takes you to the registration site. Um, you go through register. Uh, once you finish registration, we have hotel room blocks both at the Diplomat, and if you're a little more cost conscious, we have a hotel room block at the DoubleTree um, across the street. I'll say this: one of the elements, a little bit of background on how these events come about. You know, we did we do have a negotiated subsidized rate at both the Diplomat and the Double Tree, right? So the Diplomat's two seventy nine a night, the Double Tree is two twenty nine a night. We know that twenty twenty four budgets are going to be a little bit a little bit tight, so we made sure that from a value standpoint, we we're able to make deliver this entire show and this entire experience to people. You know, that can fit the budget of almost anyone's T and E. Um, and it's not just about the price though; it's also I want to say about the value, right? You said it, David. This is the one event this year that you can go to that you're going to see the largest lineup of these technology companies. You're going to get the key information you need that's going to deliver value today on how you what you should be doing, as well as help you start chart a long term strategy. And uh, again, you just go to igel.com. If you really, if anyone wants to write it down, igel.com slash disrupt24 takes you right into the registration site. Um, we have the full agenda on there. Um, we have some information on the Gypsy Kings. Um, we have, you know, everything you need. And at the end of registration, we put you right in. You can you can book your room right from there. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and, and we'll put a link to uh, to registration in the show notes here as well. Uh, Carl, this has been great information. As always, I appreciate your time. And Brian and I can't wait to see you, the team, and everyone else attending the show in Miami next month. Yeah, likewise, likewise. I am uh, looking forward to seeing you guys there. And uh and hopefully uh, many of your listeners as well. So thanks for the time today, guys. All right. See you in Miami. See you in Miami.